Hmm. Ooh, got the notice. Okay, so welcome to the July 8th edition of the Chaos Common Working Group meeting. We have an action-packed agenda for today. We have, um, uh, we'll, we'll have a look at the open issues and PRs. We also have a whole bunch of metrics that are work in progress. So we can see if we've made progress on any of those and which ones we wanna tackle in this meeting. I've included the action items with the metrics. So we can probably do those um, as we need to. Um, and then I put the review of the metric spreadsheet at the bottom because we, I think we did that recently. So we can do that if we have time. Anything else that we need to talk about? Here, I'll share my screen so we can, so people can see it, that might make it easier. Okay, cool. Um, sorry, now I just have to rearrange all my windows so I can see everything at once. There we go. Okay. Um, so we'll start with the review of open issues and PRs. It looks like we have two PRs. Um, one is renaming of the focus areas and the fixed metrics. Um, so I think Kevin, because that has deep implications on the website and potentially breaking existing stuff with metrics, I, I assume that you will just merge this one whenever you're, whenever you're ready. Uh, yes. Yep. And I, uh, I apologize. There's a bit of a slowdown on some of this stuff because we're in the middle of the website migration. I, okay. uh, I'm not, I, I'm not sure I want to ch change things in two different places. <laughs> like I've kind of, I've kind of waited in the hopes that I can just make these changes once the, the migration is through, is done. Yeah, no, that makes, that makes complete sense. I don't think these certainly aren't urgent at all. I think it's I think it's better to wait and not. And how it is when you're migrating things like websites, you just don't want to you don't want to change too much in flight for fear of creating more work for yourself. Yeah, as as it was, the freeze was kind of informal. So some things made it through the freeze and some didn't. So I've I've had to start keeping a list of the things that uh, I need to. Uh, I need to duplicate, so. So it's more of a slight thaw than a freeze is what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little slushy. Um, okay. Maybe, maybe a suggestion for you, Kevin, uh, please send an email on the mailing list so that not everyone creates or accepts a pull request because there are a couple of maintainers so that it doesn't create extra work for you. Well, so, so pull requests to markdown files are fine. Generally, we're just, we're mainly talking about structural changes on the, the website and things that, uh, so, so for the most part, like a edits to metrics, pages or content, that's fine. It's just there, there are very specific, uh, there are some things that require changes at the website side and this, this would be one of them, so. Yeah, and what, what's creating problems here is that we're we're changing links, we're changing names of, of files and directory structures. Yeah, so the the actual uh, the URLs on the website would actually have to change to accommodate this as well, uh, mm -hmm. per our per our naming convention. So. Okay, so I, I just left a comment so people know what the status of that one is. And then the other one, clarify language and types of contributions. This is something that anyone has looked at. Um, Seems pretty straightforward. Oh, I remember what this one was. I'll I'll just go. I'll go ahead and I'll just go ahead and merge this. Um, okay. Cool. Yeah, that was, it wasn't translating well and people didn't understand what uh, what exchanged meant. Um, and so we just clarified that. Okay, so that, that looks, oops, that looks good. 
And then we have, let's see, do we have any new issues? We have the focus area renaming. Um, so we have the, the pull request for that. Uh, actually, these top two issues are related to that PR. Yeah. So these okay. two will be resolved once the PR is merged after the migration of the website. Perfect. OK, that sounds good. Um, inconsistency and in folks. Oh, oh, yeah. OK, so this one's also same same boat. Because I think the predict the PR that you did also that fixed the consistency issues, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. OK, we could probably uh, just close that one and and mention it in 124 maybe. Oh, and it references the references the PR. Do we have it set up so that when we merge this PR, will it automatically close the issues? I don't believe so. Sorry, you do believe so or you don't believe so? I don't believe we have that set okay. up. Cool. Um, I'll just say that this, I'll, I'll go ahead and close it and just say that this. Well, I guess we're going to find, if we link the issue to the pull request, we're going to find out. Yeah, I think it does if you link link it or mention it. I thought that was the default behavior, but. Yeah, different projects I work on, some of them do that, some of them don't. Um, Kubernetes explicitly disabled that because it was, it was causing problems with some workflows. Yeah, uh, probably more than one pull request to close some issues. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was, it, <laughs> Kubernetes is complicated in lots of ways. Yeah. yeah. In, in our project, I don't remember any situation where a pull request has automatically closed an issue. Uh, okay. But maybe, maybe I'm just not observant. Uh, yeah, you, ha you have to link it explicitly in the pull request. Like, say this pull request, there's like a place on the right hand side. And you choose a pull request. Hmm. So the, um, but that, that's a different, there's a difference between mentioning the pull request in the, in the issue comments and actually linking it. Right. Yeah. There is, yeah. There, there's, there is a very specific way of saying that this pull request fixes a certain. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's it, it would end up here. There's a specific way to do that. Um, Okay, so I think I think we're good on the issues. We don't have Justin or Georg um, to talk about updates on either of these. Um, and then the rest of these are metrics, um, issues for, for metrics that we have on the agenda. Not all of the things we have on the agenda are um, have corresponding issues. I'm noticing, so I don't see. I didn't see a bot one. I'm waiting for some. Yeah. Um, I can get the bot one in there. Okay, an event location is there. Collaboration platforms. I also don't see one for that. Um, or did we already close that? Kevin, have you created the collaboration platforms one? Uh, I haven't created the PR yet uh, for the, uh, so we're, we're, for the most part, we're done with that metric. We need to convert the uh, Google Doc into a markdown. Uh, and then once I did that, I was going to create the, uh, uh, the issue that would go along with it that would be the, uh, the review issue, okay. the community review period issue, uh, but I have not I have not done that yet, and I will uh, I plead I plead website migration on that as well. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. no, I mean it's not it's not urgent. It's it's fine. I'm going to plead website migration on my incomplete work as well. Yes, <laughs> I I will back I'll back you up on that. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> Thank so you. Uh, okay, so you haven't PR'd this one either. No, 
Um, well, I, I do have it on my to-do list though. I, uh, I will try to get that in before the next meeting. Okay. Um, Sean, language distribution, that hasn't been PR'd in either. Um, I, did I not do that one? I thought I did that one, but yeah, I, there's no PR, I obviously didn't. Uh, unless we merged it already, which is- No, no, it's like probably possible. I need to create that PR. Okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. I know what to do. I know and that's a easy one because we're finished with the metric. I just need to put it in the markdown. So okay. I will I can actually take care of that. Uh, make sure when you do that you get the uh, you create the uh, the review issue as well and put the yep. disclaimer at the top. Yep, and I have an example. I have examples I can follow from the history. Because ideally we have issues associated with each of the metrics that we're working on so that people can easily find the documents and they don't have to dig through the, the meeting notes. So, um, so Vinod, if you want to create the um, corresponding issue with just the link to the, um, the doc for clones, that would be helpful. Yeah, I'll do that. Thanks. If we, uh, if we have, so not all of the working groups use that method, but uh, so if there is already an issue associated with the, uh, the metric, you could just add the review tag to that existing issue uh, when we go into the review period and we don't need to create a new issue for it. For the clones, I don't think we have uh, even any review tag or any, like no. this was initiated under the discussion of technical folk that uh, we'll create a separate uh, clone as a metric. Okay, yeah, so go ahead and create it as a separate issue, a new issue. Um, okay, we got sidetracked from the issues. Are there any other issues that anyone wants to talk about? Are we gonna merge the renamed focus areas? <clears throat> I can't, I can't. Uh... No, not, Kevin needs to do that after the website freeze, after the migration. Yeah. All right. I'll do it. Okay. When, all right. when we do that, it'll break. It'll break all of the common metrics on the website. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yep. Um, this is where I wish we had some of the bots that some of my other projects have. There's there's one that um, a do not merge uh, a label uh, that gets added. You can add. You can use the bots to add, and then you can't merge it until you remove that. Mm -hmm which is super helpful when you have as many maintainers on projects as we, we do. So things don't accidentally get merged. Um, okay, anything else on the issues? Okay, so now the question is we have um, a number of work in progress metrics. So um, Sean was going to bring this one back, uh, time waiting for submitter action. I think that was the one you were yeah. going mean, to. I need to clean, I volunteered to clean that up and I, I did not get to that. Okay. So I'll just leave that uh, action item. <laughs> and then um, collaboration platforms, that one just needs to be PR'd. What, what's the status on event locations? Does Matt German praise the owner of this doc? I saw that. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> I thought I need to get rid of the ownership. Was my first thought. <laughs> uh, if you want, I can take that uh, because I'm working on uh, in DEI. I'm working on uh, event location inclusivity, and I think they're related. I could probably write them together. Cool. Yeah, it looks like there was a fair bit of feedback and it still needs some work. Um, so we'll give Kevin the action item. And then, and then make a note for the next meeting that I'm not done with it yet because of the website migration. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Um, let's see, we talked about that one. Uh, bots, Matt, have you done any work on that? Yep. Okay, 
So we've got bots. Um, language distribution is just needs to be PR'd. And then we have we have clones. Um, so our it sounds like we're ready to talk about bots. Um, Fanad, are we ready to talk about clones as well? Uh, yes, I just framed a question and uh, some thoughts around it, but not I've written much in that. So maybe we can discuss it. Sorry, so maybe so you want to discuss it in this meeting? Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. Um, do we want to anybody have a preference whether we start with clones or whether we start with bots? Maybe we'll try to spend how much time do we have left? Maybe 10 minutes on each of them, 15 minutes, something like that. Um, we'll start with clones. Do you actually, Vanel, do you want to share your screen and walk us through it? Or do you want me to just leave this up and you? Yeah, talk? just leave this up because there, there's not much I've done. I've done. Like I, how this idea came up was more on a discussion on the technical code, whether uh, we download a copy as a with the intention of keeping it as a host style or with the intention of downloading the copy, making edits and uh, contributing back to the original project. So technical folk is more on that uh, intention, contributing back to the uh, original project. But clone is, so what I felt is I listened to that discussion and all these things. So there's a just difference of the intention of why we clone and why we clone. So now the question is, do we need this metric as a just to separate the intention of cloning or copying and contributing it back or creating a separate copy. Uh, so I don't believe intention is attached to either of these. Yes. So, uh, so. It's uh, one of the issues we had with technical fork was that intention, intention kept on being put into the definition. Uh, however, we don't really know the intention for forks or clones. Uh, I do, I do think these two metrics, they both need to exist. Perhaps we should revisit the technical form mm. one real quick, just to, to peek at the language. Yes, I've entered the issue. Uh, like if you open this link, now, uh, so, so like clone and fork are interchangeably used. Some use it as a clone, like uh, uh, whereas GitHub use it as a fork. I'm not even sure we can measure clones. You can, there is an API for it, but you have to have access to the repository. So um, at least on GitHub, no, if, if I don't have a role in the repository, I can't get the clone data, but if I do, I can. So it's, I guess, somewhat restricted, but it is available. Really? So if I, yeah. Clone Kubernetes on my local machine. Someone can get that from the API that I've done. They won't that. know that you did that from the API, but they will know how many clones have been made in the time period. But usually, it uh, typically the API is giving me two weeks of data at a time each time I call it. So you just basically, if you continuously collect it, you can you can have it. But again, you have to have the rights to that repo. I have a script somewhere that pulls it. Uh, I use I use it to keep track of Augur's clone activity. Even before going in that detail, first question is how we differentiate between a clone and a fork. Yeah. Well, a, a clone is just like if I get clone a repo that I may not I may just be using it or testing it out or experimenting with it. But if I don't create my own fork or branch, if I have I mean probably fork, then I won't be able to modify it. Um, so theoretically, yes, if someone's created a fork, you can assume they've made a clone of it um, because, you know, why else would you make a fork? Yep, that that is like, uh, that's where the this issue is. Like if you go back to the issue, this discussion is 
clone is used as a fork, fork is used as a, they both are used in a different context interchangeably. So is it the purpose is to differentiate those differences or keep it as a same thing? Uh, like that is a main thing I'm still trying to say. Like people use the, they use the language uh, interchangeably, right? So they're yes. to forks and clones and copies and things like that. The, the language is, is kind of imprecise. Uh, however, a clone is a specific thing that we can measure on GitHub. Uh, I'm not sure if it's measurable on other platforms, but it, it is a different measurable thing from a fork. Right. We can we can measure them separately. And getting back to what Sean said, um, you you can create a fork without cloning it. Yeah, you can. On GitHub. I mean, yeah, no, totally, you can do that. So, I just I don't I can't think of a reason why someone would do that, but you can. Well, not everyone. So so GitHub, ha you can you can do things within the UI, and some people actually do that. So they never clone the repository; they fork it. And then yes. they make changes in the UI, and you can do everything you need to do to submit a pull request from there. Yes. Oh, that that is exactly. I see. Yeah. Directly in the browser. Okay, right. so we have a use case right there. All right. Yep. For forking, but not cloning. Yep, uh, you do. If it's a style of work that does exist in the world. So that is where I, I'm still confused. Do we need a separate metric uh, as a fork and a clone? I have a question for Sean on that. So Sean, you said you specifically keep track of how many clones. Is there something that you do with that data or is there a reason that you do that? I do it so I can report to my funders um, how many clones Augur has had. That's it. Well, that seems like a reason that we should have a metric. If someone somewhere maybe could use it. And if we okay. if this ties back to value in the academic space, because um, yeah. we have that metric, then maybe it's something we should have a metric for. So would a would a then, clone in this case would it be some sort of proxy for uh, it's a proxy for usage use. or yep. it's yep. a proxy for usage. If it's a straight up clone of the base repository, I assume it's being used, uh, not contributed to. So then I have a question: like, can I say fork is a proxy of usage? No, no, I don't. I don't think that's the case. And I, I do think they're two separate metrics. I think we're I think we're on the right track here with with having clone as a separate metric. Okay, so maybe like a, a distinction or a definition is what I'm trying to get out of this discussion. Is like how do I different? So in my mind, they both are confusing to me. Like they are used being used as interchangeably in a different scenarios in a different context. How do I distinguish these two things? Like. Uh, clone is a copy, fork is also a copy. Um, I would say the distinction lies where the copy exists. So like a clone is on your local machine and a fork is on like the GitHub space. Uh, yeah, I think there's some intentionality. Um, you know, if I intend to just use something or explore it, I probably am only cloning it. If I possibly intend to make modifications, I probably fork it. So then again, if we are going to the intention of there is a like I'm intention of modification and giving back or modification and creating a separate branch. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, although I have also for projects just so that I can experiment with a version that I know is not going to change. So if I run into trouble, at least I know it's not updates to the repo that are causing the trouble. Um, so there are there are use cases where people make a fork before they experiment with something in my, in my experience. Um, clone is the closest equivalent to a download that GitHub offers. And download is one of those metrics that people use as a, I don't know, proxy is probably the wrong word, but it's sort of a proxy for just straight up usage. Um, but different people operate differently. Um, so maybe the they're always new, making interpretations of what that clone number means. Maybe rather than using the copy language that we use for technical fork, we use the the download language, mm -hmm. uh, and we and we and we do talk about it as a proxy for for usage. However, we can we can uh, we can be clear that. Uh, uh, clones and forks may be related to each other. 
in the description. So. I'm taking a shot at um, simplifying the question a little bit. Yeah, there's a thread on the GitHub community uh, forum that was written by one of the staff members that maybe we could use as a reference that explains the difference between forking and cloning, at least on GitHub. Can you add it here as a reference so that we have it? Now, my other question was going to be, and Elizabeth, that's a good segue to what my other question is. Um, I don't use GitLab much. What terms does GitLab use for these? Does it use forks and clones? Does it use something else? I think it does use forks and clones, but let me check. But there is an article of uh, uh, Wiki <clears throat> that was in the issue, linked in the issue. They use clone and they use fork on GitLab. And they use it with the same definitions as GitHub? Yep. Just, okay. So here is the article from oh, the key with Was that this. the same? Oh no, okay, it's two different articles. Yeah, it's two different. Like Vicky uh, has mentioned in her uh, article that GitHub, you, uh, GitHub has used this fork as a part of a copy or a clone, but clone is you download it on your local machine. Yes. I can also confirm that Bitbucket uses the terms clone and fork. Okay. So do they use it in the same context? Yes. Like or for that for GitHub and for GitLab is the same thing and the yes. clone for GitHub and okay. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. Okay. Okay. Um what do, what do people think about the question? I just feel like that's the bit we need to get right before we can continue editing. I like it. It's simple. Yeah, I like it too. Simple in a good way. <laughs> yeah. Are you are you okay with it? Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I'll go ahead and accept the changes then. Um So Vino, do you have do you have what you need to work on the rest of this metric and bring it back? For yes, now? yes, I do have now. Perfect. Um, anything else we want to talk about on on this metric, or do we want to just uh, give the action item to come back? From the discussion, it just sounds like keeping it very simple as to what it is. is yeah, take my takeaway on it. Yep. Yeah, and that, that's similar to when we did technical fork. So and we as can simple as possible and uh, and try to remove intention from it. Yep. Because we don't we don't really know intention. You can provide you can provide some use case in the objectives. Uh, yep. And we should probably try to make it kind of similar to the, the technical fork um, metric. Okay. The two yep. kind of kind of should probably sort of mirror each other. Yep. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, this was helpful. Like I was getting a stuck, like, do we need it or don't we need it? They are used interchangeably. I just need that clarity. Cool. Um, uh, okay, so let's add an action item. Okay. 
So bots, um, Matt, do you want me to stop sharing so that you can share and kind of walk us through yeah, the sure. metrics we need? Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is now bot activity. For a while, this was the ratio of bot activity to human activity. And I couldn't really figure out why we would want that. So I just, I just went to bot activity because at that point you could create a ratio with it. You, you can do whatever you want with it. So um, I don't know what bots and happiness is. <laughs> So, I think we captured that either. bot to human activity ratio in the implementation section here uh, in the last time we discussed that. All right. Well, it's cute. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can probably get rid of that. I don't remember where it came from either. I think it was something around bots make us happy because they do the work for us. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I remember correctly, but yeah, we don't, we don't need to keep that. And so really, you know, I've just been trying to go through thinking pretty simply just what what we would care about with bots. Uh -huh. So as listed in the objectives there, um, we have the visualization. If this is the dev stats visualization of bots. So I thought that was nice to include. Sean, I don't know if, you know, Augur or Remore Lab does this as well, if you can. Yeah, any, I mean, bots are basically users and they yeah. have, if they have understandable usernames and are identified okay. as bots, typically in the username. So you can just filter on that. Pretty yeah, well. yeah, okay. it's like usually something bot when. Yeah, okay. Grimoire, Grimoire Lab also has a way of filtering bot products. So, so this was, I, I'm, I'm remembering an, an issue we had in this discussion uh, last time. So for it to be a bot, does it have to be a user or could it just be a piece of automated software? So I know a lot of bots are often users themselves and can be kind of looked at as, as users, but if a process is automated through a piece of software, is that still considered a bot? I didn't follow that. So you can automate a process using a piece of software. Is that yes. a bot? Uh, but the bot gets a status of as a separate entity on these platforms. Like they have a user kind of a status, but they are driven by a piece of a software or a, a code, which is ultimately written by human. But and like right, so as my, an organization, so question, as a separate entity, similarly, a bot has a separate entity. So my question is, for it to be a bot, does it have to have a user identity? Yeah, you can't do anything on GitHub without a user. Yes. You can't automate, you can't automate processes uh, without, no. without connecting it to a user. That's the only way I know of doing it. I. I won't say definitively you can't, but it's the only way I know. I, I know to do it. Somebody, in, if, if it's possible in some other way, people on Kubernetes would be the ones that would know. Well, Kubernetes has just like that one big bot. It has the it has Prow. Which, the big the big bot. Well, Prow is like a piece of software that has that the bot does everything. Yeah. But I don't I don't know how I don't I don't know how that's implemented like whether it's implemented as a a user or multiple user i was just kind of looking so i think what i think what kevin is getting at is a really important point and that we actually need to define what a bot is and what it isn't i think in order in order for this metric to, to be yeah done. so i think i think like github actions could be an example of a bot it's essentially something that happens automatically when something else happens or something that happens automatically on a schedule. So no person has to touch the, the, the repository on its platform. It's just something that happens automatically. Like it's automated. There's no human that pushes a button that makes the bot do its thing. 
By the way, in answer to your question, Don, that Kubernetes bots do have those do have user users attached to them. Okay. Um, like K8S bot is a user has a user profile and. I thought they probably did, but I wasn't sure. Would we also include things like our um, calendar integration in Slack, for instance? Like that's a bot that's giving us what events are happening today, but there's no, doesn't have its own user, I don't believe. Is um, it on the GitHub platform? It's, it's on Slack. So are we, so, are we making this just on GitHub or is this gonna be for all okay. of the activity in a, in a project? Mm. Yeah, that's a that's a very good point. Uh, yeah, agree. Those are the Slack ones are specifically targeted at communication, so they're letting the bots for Slack are typically posting messages to inform you about something, right? They're not code changes, and that I'm just pointing out that distinction. I say yes, be inclusive, but there is a slight difference in the well, like. A, there's a well, constraint. Well, Qbot, Qbot could deploy code from Slack. Like that's really? what it was for. You could just type Holy in a crap. command. You could type to Twitter. It would tweet from like Qbot when we at GitHub did does so much stuff. And I think it's open source. So I'm what's sure people are using it. What's it Qbot, called? Q Qbot. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a lot of the bot activity in repos is, is around communication too. Not all of it is attached to code changes. So yeah. maybe oh. we can say that like a bot can have a profile or it can be just a piece of software. So it includes both the scenarios. So, so the, the high level definition there would be a bot is a piece of software, software. that is yep. created to automate, to automate project activities, right? Yes. And that's a and, really high level definition. Yes, and we can even further elaborate, a bot can take a role of a user or it can be just remain as a software. To me, that's a little too high level. I've been kind of looking on Wikipedia because that's that's where all the definitions are. For everything, it is all written. <laughs> um, but this this bit of it seems, I just posted it in the chat. Software bots are used to support development activities such as communication among software developers and automation of repetitive tasks. So are we talking about, about software bots? Because that's that's the Wikipedia article that I'm reading is software bots. Um, it talks about you know GitHub and Stack Overflow and um, that's where my mind has been. This conversation has led me to understand that there's a variety of or to think that there's a variety of different bots. Um, I don't know that we need to put them all into a single metric, because then the metric might become <laughs> a little too broad. Um, I mean, we could have several metrics that would be, say, software development bot activity. I had just called it repository bot activity. Mm -hmm. And another could be communication related. This is always the question then is, are those different metrics or different filters on the same metric? I think they're filters. Okay. I think the bot thing. activity is the metric, yeah. and then I think you could filter it based on either what type of activity or the type of platform. So you could filter based on Slack bots versus repository bots versus I'm trying to think what else you'd have bots on. There are bots on IRC when I used IRC. I think there are bots on Discord too, on like forums. Yeah. So any of the communication channels or development channels that you'd have within your open source community could have bots. Uh, access, access control bots would be another. Will that not be covered in the software development side? Uh, I don't think so. When I when I see software development, I'm I'm actually thinking automating tasks around software development. Uh, access control is a I, that to me is 
uh, a different thing. And I think those would be the three primary functions for for uh, for bots in general, like help help with sophomore development tasks, help with communication, and help with access control. I'm trying to think if there are another or other. Uh, Because those are basically gatekeeper bots, right? There, I linked a, um, a article on Twilio's website um, listing six bots to better your open source project. So they can be also for like uh, inclusivity, mm. you know, if, uh, mm. inclusive naming things. If someone can you paste you know, that, can you paste that? That sounds cool. It's in uh, the references six bots to better your open source project. Okay. Oh yeah, there's a Slack bot that I've seen implemented on a couple of Slack channels where if you if you say something, it will send you, I think, a private message that says, you know, like maybe instead of guys, you might try using folks or you know, like whatever. That is are. a customized option you can have in the Slack. Like if you say some word, it'll say it everything in that open channel or it can send you as a private message. Hmm. We have a Slack bot in our lab communication. Whenever somebody uses PK word, we get a lot of funny messages from the bot. They also list one for improving documentation, but I don't know if like, I mean, it's a bot technically, but like you could also use Grammarly or something like that. So I don't know at what point, like that's kind of fuzzy, I think fuzzy definition, but it is there. I do think it's funny, a GitHub or sorry, Google Docs that I'm anonymous manatee while I'm typing, but it knows who I am because it shows it right there. Yeah, maybe you're, I guess you're just anonymous in the course of the <laughs> editing, but your edits get assigned to you. It's a little weird how they do that. It is, it is funny how that works. Anonymous manatee. I got the cool animal this time. I think Quokka might be the best one yet. We <laughs> <laughs> took that little detour. So like, so little... Quokka. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Quokka is pretty Manatees cool. are great too, though. I will say they're pretty rad. <laughs> okay, we are about out of time. Um, Matt, is this uh, is this what you needed? Do you want to take this and do some more work on it and bring it back? Uh, yeah. What What do you see as the next step? Yeah, I can kind of work on it a little bit. I mean, a lot of these edits though were, they don't require me to additionally edit. Okay. You know, so I mean, maybe we could, I'll take a look at it, but um, accept the things, but maybe next time we could look to close this out. That'd be great. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I'll just update it that you're gonna uh, clean it up to finalize. In the next meeting. Okay, cool. Um, anything else that we haven't talked about that we should talk about? Given that we're we're pretty much out of time, we probably don't need to review the metric spreadsheet because I think we've done that recently. Um, as per usual, let me just make sure that I can actually attend the next meeting and that I don't need somebody to. Um, Oh, actually, I do need somebody to run the next one because I, I don't know. I may or may not be able to attend. I can so, run I can run the next one. Okay. Do it by committee. I can help do Shannon. Oh yeah, good. I like committees. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'll add that to the to the notes. I'll add it to the I'll add it to the top of the notes. Um, 
on to drive the next meeting. Cool. All right. Anything else real quick in our last remaining minute? All good. All okay. Good. Call it a wrap. Thanks, everybody. I feel like Thank we got a little stuff today, so this is fantastic. Sure. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.